did you get pulled into like into the guidance office? Oh no, I just I went on academic probation after my first year. Okay. And then you didn't pull your grades up. Never pulled my grades up. Lost the scholarship. And my answer to losing my scholarship was, oh, well, let me go into the military so they can pay for college. How'd you do? How'd you do in the military? Um, I did pretty, I did it okay, okay in the military. That, military is all about discipline. Right. So that was. That was, but. You're used to that. In high that school. That was back to what you're used to. Right. Okay. And, and in high school, I was in JROTC, so. Okay. It was in the same, same You were familiar vein. with it. I was very familiar with it. It wasn't that hard of a transition. Okay. But there was still a partying aspect in me. So once I did get out of basic training in AIT and was in reserves and going back to school, okay. I was still in party mode. Got it. Which was even worse because now I'm in party mode with a little bit of cash in my pocket. Right. <laughs> like, right. I wasn't a broke college student anymore. I'm, now I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm a, a reservist. Did you travel? As far as? Like over the, all over the world? Like the um, yes. I, I, once I joined the regular army, because I went from the reserves to the National Guard okay. to the regular army. Okay. Once I got to the regular army, I uh, was stationed in Germany. Really? Where? Uh, Berlin? Schweinfurt. 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 Okay. The, the city of pigs. City of flying pigs. Okay. Um, I was in, uh, stationed in Schweinfurt. Um, once I got to Schweinfurt in Germany in 2003, August of 2003, I was told I was getting deployed to Iraq in, for all of 2004. Okay. Went to Iraq for 2004. Um, well, went to Kuwait the beginning of 2004. How was that experience? Kuwait or Iraq? Or in Germany, like all three of them. So how on the scale of one to five, with five being the best and one being the worst, how was Germany? Five. Five. Five Germany was a dream come true to the party goer in me. <laughs> it was a dream come true. It was like, all right, you don't even have to go to class. Just make sure you go to work. Right. And go home, and you can just party as much as you want. So you told the army y'all messed up sending me here. What? Of all people? Oh man! Listen, <laughs> when, you can in Germany. Beautiful Europe, women. You can drink. Hmm? Beautiful women. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, it was just such a ple it was a plethora of women. You got you have Germans, you have Turkish, you have Swedish, you have Africans, you have half Africans, half Turkish, half German. It's just so it's it's a and the other girls from America who were there with you. Oh. Uh, well, hey. you're like, eh. <laughs> once you've been, once you've been, you know, right. you've been with Americans so much, and you know, like most of the American girls, they want to like cuff you, and you know, they want want you to be in a relationship. The German girls are just like, because they knew what it was. They know y'all here for six months, and y'all out. And then not only that, the icing on the cake is being an African American from the hood in Germany, right? That's basically being a magnet to all European women. Instant superstar. Guaranteed. Just like in South Jersey. Like when you go other places in South Jersey outside of Camden and they know you from Camden, you're an instant star. Guaranteed. Until proven otherwise. Until proven otherwise, you're an instant star. You could in in, in Germany, you could be like Lack of a better use of words, you could be from like Lindenwall, fake. You know how Lindenwall guys right. back in the day used to fake like they was from Camden. Right, like, right. Oh, I'm from Camden. I'm I'm hood. This and that. This and that. You could be that guy in in Germany, and you got the do rag with the headband on, with the with the fitted cat, <laughs> and all the accessories to be like super this super hood guy, and get boo cool women. Get away with it. But then. They see a guy that's actually from the hood. Right. That don't need all that, but they can tell, like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. He done lived a hard life for real, for real. <laughs> they right. notice that, and you get even more women. Okay. It's 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 bananas. So it you was, go from Germany to where? From Germany to, uh, well, to Kuwait. All right, so you go to Kuwait, one to five. Kuwait was, I'd say, about like a three. Three, okay. So it was a, a downgrade from Germany. Oh yeah, because it was le it was less developed. We were living in tents. The sh we didn't have working water s water systems, so the showers were like you either there was two different modes of the shower. It was either ice cold or scalding hot. Okay. When it, because what it was in in Kuwait and in Iraq, 
the water system they had for the showers because they were basically being built up. Okay. It was basically a big tank of water just sitting outside, and that's how you got the shower, shower and the toilets and everything working. Now, that big tank, if it's sitting outside in 130-degree weather right. all day long, and you go to take a shower, all of that water is hot. There's no such thing as like, all right, I'm going to turn the cold on a little bit, and then the hot, and it's going to... No. The cold is just as hot as the, <laughs> as the hot. <laughs> got it. Got it. Got it. Got and, it. and vice versa. If you go to take a shower first thing in the morning, and that tank's been sitting out there because desert, desert weather is so extreme. Okay. In the daytime, it's extremely hot. At nighttime, it could get extremely cold. It might go from 130 to like 50. Really? And it's like, whoa. Like, I, okay, I got to really bundle up. Now, that tank is sitting out there in that 50-degree weather all night long. You go take a shower for PT because you get up about maybe 4 or 5 in the morning. Go take a shower. What's PT? Uh, physical training. Physical training. Physical so that's every day? Every day. Okay. Every day. And it depends on what unit in, what unit you're in, whether you do it in the morning, afternoon, uh, after uh, work okay. or whatever. But mainly, you end up doing your PT in the morning. First quick thing question, in the morning. Quick question. How was the food in Germany? On base, it was just basically cafeteria food. Okay. But once you left base... Right, the actual authentic German food. It's very heavily uh, pork-based. Really? Oh, yeah, like bratwurst and... Right. It, it, for me, and for me being a Muslim, it was kind of like, oh, God. Got you, got you, got Especially you. Especially being as though you don't, if you don't know German... Right. And you can't, you can't if you can't read German... Right. You, you're definitely ordering like, uh... Right, you're taking a, a guess. Unless, uh, you know, they have pictures or... or they. Once you get to Germany, they teach you German. Okay. They put you through a German class so you can know. So certain things, you get a good idea of. Like, I, I don't remember the word for pork. Well, swine. Swine. Right, right, right. Um, and you, you, you get to know, know certain things or you get to know to ask certain things. Okay. Because, like, going to a McDonald's off base, whereas a McDonald's in the States, you can get a quarter pounder, a uh, Big Mac or whatever, and you know it's all beef patties. In Germany, only the Big Mac is all beef patties. Mm. The quarter pounder is beef and pork mixed in a patty. Interesting. Which and also, McDonald's sell beer. In Germany. In Germany, McDonald's, wow. Burger King, fast food restaurants. Period. They also beer. Interesting. All right. So you go to a a Middle Eastern, uh, Islamic country. So right now you're in Kuwait. What was that food like? Well, we weren't really allowed to go off base for food okay, got in it. Kuwait and Iraq. Okay. But we would have some of the Iraqis or Kuwaitis come on base and they would cook. And their food was actually it was good. It was basically like like a home cook home cooked meal. Okay. But kinda different. Like their their beef patties would have like uh egg in it. Okay. Or their 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 chicken not not even patties, like Basically, like burgers, homemade burgers. Right. It would have egg, egg and onion mi mixed in it. Okay. And they had, they would basically have French fries, but whatever potatoes they weren't, they were using. It wasn't the same potatoes that we're used to, so right. it was kind of of a different texture. Okay. But it was it was still good. So Iraq, one to five. I'll say. I'll say a, a three as well. Okay. Okay. Now, Maxie, Max, I'm gonna take it down to a two because you had. I have to add in the factor of being scared for my life. Twenty four. <laughs> it's not funny. I'm sorry for laughing. <laughs> I mean, no, but <laughs> yeah. I was scared for my life. Twenty four seven. The Iraqis did not like Americans. No, not they don't want you there. Yeah, I get it. I get it. We get it. It's it's more than that though because going on a mission, you go through so many different villages and and, and uh, going on a mission on a road. Okay. Whereas in one village, you might be riding through, and the Americans that may have been there previously before you may have been good to them. Okay. So they're happy to see you. They're, you know, they're waving and everything. Right. Whereas in the very next village, they may have been treated poorly by Americans. Right. So you get people throwing the fingers. Other people, they're looking like you don't know if they're going to try to shoot. Okay. They might try to throw bricks. Okay. They might try anything. 
Anything is bound to happen, so you have to be on the lookout. Even in the the villages that were happy to see you, you still have to be alert and aware because there could be a wolf in sheep's clothing. That ties back to what we were talking about in school, in the hood. You yeah. never know what somebody has went through right. that morning or the night before or right. every day. Right. That's interesting. So would you consider your personal opinion? Because we said, even though the government says that you're an adult at 18, we're still kids. Right. Would you consider your military experience part of your childhood? Or do you feel like you grew up? No, I was definitely an adult. I was definitely an adult. Well, my Germany and Germany and I, my regular army experience, I was an adult. Okay. Going into reserves and the National Guard, I would I would consider that still kind of like my the end of the childhood. The, the very the very end of the childhood. Okay. With that being said, final task: give some advice to blink your old you. So knowing everything that that you know now, being all over the world, being from smack in the middle of the hood, like growing up in a super strict household, growing up in a pretty lax household, you you experience kind of the best of both worlds with everything that you learned, the person you are today and everything that you know now. If you could talk to a younger version of you, a younger Keenan, how old would he be and what advice would you give him? Hmm. The advice I would give, it would have to be to 18-year-old Keenan. 18-year-old Keenan. What would you say to him? Fuck partying. Focus. Get through college. Don't worry about the, don't don't ever go into the military. Even though I, I love the military experience, don't ever go into the military. Why not, by the way? Um, as, I'm kind of anti-government, so it's like I don't want to, like, I was basically a puppet. Okay. I was bu basically a body being used. I turned into their property. Um, also strap up, strap up for sure, strap up, because 23-year-old me was not ready for a child. Okay. Strap up, um, stay focused, travel. Travel, travel as much as possible. I would have liked to have traveled a lot more than I have already. Keenan, thank you for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what? Kids never forget. Kids never. Kids don't forget. Kids don't forget. <laughs> kids don't forget. I appreciate you, bro.